Hello and welcome to my Warlock class Smiths of Pandaria overview. My name's Mioni and I'm going to be looking at what makes those dots tick in the next World of Warcraft expansion. There's lots to cover but let's begin with spells and uses and how to get a potential PvE spec on the go and some reasons why, starting with Demonology. So firstly let me just make it clear why I'm in the Undercity, there is currently some rather horrible input lag on the beta servers, so I thought I'd come somewhere a little bit quieter to test out abilities, so it makes more sense to lag less. So now we're away from that noisy mage, let's have a look at the specialization of demonology and what benefits you gain from actually choosing this spec at all. Firstly, it's obvious to those familiar to demonology is metamorphosis, which is your demon form, in which time is spent using more powerful abilities enhanced by the form. A lot has changed as to how metamorphosis works in Mists of Pandaria, and let's clarify what exactly with the next specialization benefit, Demonic Fury. Now, Demonic Fury is a new resource added to the game, of which metamorphosis and your most powerful abilities run off of. Now, you gain this resource through your damaging spells and your demon special attacks, along with a few other elements such as wild imps, which we'll talk about shortly. We'll look further into that when we talk about rotations. The third specialization acquisition is Hand of Gul'dan. Forget what you know about Hand of Gul'dan, as it is now an instant cast ability, that at the exchange of 15,000 mana on a 15 second cooldown and a 40 yard range allows you to summon a falling meteor, which strikes a target and all enemies around it for 6 yards for 10,182 shadow damage, and inflicts an effect known as Shadow Flame, which reduces the movement speed of the target by 30% and deals 18,320 24 Shadow Flame damage over the course of 5.55 seconds. This also generates 2 Demonic Fury every time it deals damage. This is heavily prioritised as we will see later on. Fourth specialization bonus should be no surprise to veterans of demonology or people who know about it. This is the exclusive spec pet, the Fell Guard. It's still here and we'll talk about how to enhance that later on. As you can see, Molten Core is now in demonology and has a strong passive. When Shadow Flame or a Wild Imp deals damage, you have an 8% chance to trigger Molten Core. And Molten Core, once procced, reduces the cast time and mana cost of your next Soulfire spell by 50%. This makes Soulfire very strong and we'll see just exactly how strong very soon. The last specialization is Wild Imps, a new one this in which is a nice little passive. When Shadow Bolt, Soul Fire and Touch of Chaos hits, you summon a Wild Imp. This will happen every 18.50 seconds and each Wild Imp will cast a total of 10 Firebolts before departing, with each of those Firebolts generating 5 Demonic Fury to spend in Metamorphosis. That concludes the tour of specialization benefits from simply choosing Demonology, now let's go into the so, Affliction, your specialization benefits are damage over time abilities and effects, with Corruption here dealing 28,900 shadow damage over the course of 18.50 seconds and generating 4 Demonic Fury each time it deals damage. Agony, an instant cast spell dealing 32,236 to 56,378 shadow damage over the course of 24.05 seconds. This damage is dealt slowly at first and then builds up each time it deals damage. Unstable Affliction with a 1.39 second cast at a cost of 4,500 mana on a 40 yard range. This is a dot that causes 25,288 damage over the course of 14.80 seconds. If the Unstable Affliction is dispelled, it will cause 25,288 damage to the Dispeller and silence them for 4 seconds like usual. Malefic Grasp here, a new spell that uh, at the cost of 4,500 mana and 4,500 mana per second, this channeled ability on a 40 yard range does 12,189 shadow damage over the course of 2.78 seconds. Every 0.93 seconds when Malefic Grasp deals damage, it causes all of your other periodic affliction damage effects to instantly deal 50% of their normal periodic damage. Very, very nice, this one. 
Drain Soul at the cost of 4,500 mana plus 4,500 mana per second, channels on a 40-yard range and drains the soul of the target, dealing 6,773 shadow damage every 1.85 seconds, energizing one soul shard after it deals damage twice. If a target dies, three soul shards are energized, last for 11.10 seconds. Additionally, if the target is at or below 20% health when the Drained Soul deals damage, it causes all of your other periodic damage effects to instantly deal 100% of their normal periodic damage. Lastly on the list is Haunt, which costs 1 Soul Shard now on a 1.39 second cast and a 40 yard range, which sends a Ghostly Soul into the target dealing 27,092 shadow damage and increasing all damage done by your spells on the target by 20% percent for eight seconds. The changes to Affliction are immense and we'll look further into them when we come to the rotations after we look at the next specialization benefits from Destruction. So, Destruction has the obvious firepower as usual with some changes. Your first specialization is Immolate, which burns the enemy for 5,418 fire damage and then an additional 27,089 fire damage over the course of 13.87 seconds. This is at the cost of 9,000 mana and has a 40 yard range and takes 1.39 seconds to cast. This also replaces Corruption. Conflagrate here, making enemies explode for 18,061 fire damage, and if the target is afflicted by Immolate, their movement speed is reduced by 50% for 5 seconds. This has a 40 yard range, costs 3k mana, and is an instant cast with a 12 second recharge. Incinerate deals 27,091 fire damage to an enemy with a 1.85 second cast time, 40 yard range, and a 15k mana cost. Chaos Bolt is up next, dealing 55,829 shadow damage. Chaos Bolt always critically strikes. In addition, the damage is increased by your critical strike chance. This spell costs 1 Burning Ember, has a 40 yard range, a 2.7 second second cast time, and replaces Soul Fire. Chaotic Energy is next, a passive which allows you to regenerate your mana 625% faster, and your spell haste also increases your mana regeneration. This replaces Life Tap, a cool design here, and completely replacing Life Tap is an interesting idea, giving you more of a Fire Mage feel. Burning Embers are the last to list off the specialization for destruction, and these are a resource, which are generated by primarily casting Incinerate, and are consumed by Chaos Bolt to deal damage or Ember Tap to heal you. That concludes all of the specializations and the benefits you gain from their choices. Now let's move on to talent choices with discussions on their PvE and PvP uses. So this is the new talent system in which you choose 6 choices from the 18 listed on screen. Let's go through each, give an overview of usefulness in PvE and what I would personally choose. So tier 1 is all about health regen and healing. There are many personal choices here that are situational, throughout the entire tree actually, yet the first tier has some benefits which become clear. So choice 1 is Dark Regeneration, which is an instant cast spell restoring 30% of you and your pet's maximum health and increasing all healing received by 25% over 12 seconds. Nice one here, very strong and the healing bonus is beautiful for those heavy AoE situations. And with all the life tapping going off, this could be a real contender for most PvE situations, simply as a way of maintaining DPS uptime with life tap for mana, and less worrying about health. However, the next choice is Soul Leech, which is a passive choice, of which your Shadow Bolt, Soul Fire, and Touch of Chaos spells will heal you and your pet for 10% of the damage you deal. Now, this is a good alternative choice, especially if you're hitting heavy. Also, bearing in mind that having a passive like this negates any downtime to cast the previous choice's spell and means more DPS overall, and effectively more healing to you. Personally, this would be my choice of the tree, simply as my playstyle is more accustomed to making things as simple as possible for myself. Choice 3 is Harvest Life, a spell at the cost of 3k mana and 3k mana per second as it is channeled. On a 40 yard range, this drains life from all enemies within 15 yards of a target, causing 9,333 shadow damage and restoring 3 to 4.5% of the caster's total health every 0.93 seconds, lasting for 5.55 
5 seconds. This feels like a situational choice for dealing with ads in certain situations where you might need to kite them or deal with them without a tank. However, this I presume is mostly a PvP choice with obvious benefits in large groups of mobs or players either way. I still stand by my choice of Soul Leech for PvE with a potential for the other two to be useful in certain situations, but for standalone fights Soul Leech is the way to go in my opinion. The second tier is gained at level 30 and gives a choice of the following. This tier is all about movement impairment, and the talents reflect that. With choice 1 being Howl of Terror, an instant cast AoE horror, which causes 5 enemies within 10 yards to flee in fear for 20 seconds. Damaged cores may cancel Howl of Terror, and this has a 40 second cooldown. When hit by a damaging attack, the cooldown on Howl of Terror is reduced by 1 seconds. I would love to find a use for this rather ballistic AoE horror in PvE, apart from when you would have aggro on things that you shouldn't or you need to scatter mobs for some bizarre reason. Personally, I would use this in PvP and not a lot much else. Second choice is Mortal Coil, an instant cast horror on a 45 second cooldown with a 30 yard range. This causes an enemy target to run in horror for 3 seconds. The caster also restores 15% of their maximum health. This could be useful if a fear would be ever needed in PvE with the health regen, but again is more suited to PvP with the next choice being slightly more useful. Yet also, in my opinion, a very player versus player situational use. Shudder Fury. This is your stun, which is instant cast on a 30 second cooldown and a 30 yard range, which stuns all enemies within 8 yards for 3 seconds, potentially very useful in PvE on slowing ads down in fights, and obviously useful for PvP. Personally, I like the choice of fear here, but I find that Shadow Fury will be the most beneficial to have as a main rule of thumb for PvE, yet I would wager that the others have significant situational uses for PvE which will come into their own as fights develop. Tier 3 is all about damage prevention and sacrifices, with choice 1 being Soul Link, similar to how you remember the spell to react before, however this instant cast spell on a 10 second cooldown ensures all damage and healing you and your demon take is shared, but your demon's health is reduced by 50% as a reaction to this. Recasting the spell will cancel the effect, and this spell replaces Hell Funnel entirely. This used to be used before Miss of Pandaria, but this spell might be a choice you might take lightly, as choice 2 is Sacrificial Pact. This is an instant cast spell with a 1 minute cooldown, in which your demon sacrifices half its current health to shield its master for 200% of the sacrificed health, lasting for 10 seconds. If you have no demon, your health will be sacrificed instead. This is essentially a very useful bubble to have on you, especially in PvE when high damage is coming, popping this is a godsend and will likely be a choice for most PvE encounters and indeed a situational use for PvP. Choice 3 is Dark Bargain, an instant cast spell with a 3 minute cooldown, preventing all damage for 10 seconds. When the shield fades, 50% of the damage prevented is dealt over 20 seconds. The release of the damage makes this usable in PvP to slow down burst against you and give you time to heal up, and could be useful in PvE also. Yet I find Sacrificial Pact more interesting for Demonology for example, as the damage of pet deals will heal it anyway. So this will likely be the best way for that specialization, yet all choices in this tree can be used situationally, I feel, and dependent on the fight, any one of these could be more useful. But as generic specs go, I would choose Sacrificial Pact over the others. Tier 4 is all about movement and movement impairment again. Similar to Tier 2, yet the choices are much greater, and so are the requirements. The first choice of this tier is Blood Fear. This instant cast spell with a 30 yard range, 10 second cooldown and a sacrifice of 10% of your health is an instant cast 20 second long fear. This replaces your normal fear on your bars. This was without the 10% health cost in a previous build, but as it stands post nerf in this build at the time of this video that this was created, that cost remains. With a lot of utility in instantly getting something away from you and with it being away from you for 20 seconds, this is very tempting, especially for 5 man dungeons as a use of temporary CC. Choice 2, however, is Burning Rush. 
which will likely be your choice for many PVEers, as it is an instant cast ability with no cooldown, which drains 4% of your maximum health per second to increase your movement speed by 50%. This lasts until you cancel it. This, albeit damaging you, is akin to movement speed increases that you used to enchant on boots, only so much more useful. So in my eyes, this has great PvE uses with some minor potential in PvP. But the next choice is more of a PvP choice with Unbound Will, an instant cast ability at the cost of 20% of your maximum health on a 1 minute cooldown, which purges all magic effects, movement impairing effects and all effects which cause loss of control of your character. This is cool for PvP and doesn't really have much of a PvE use, admittedly. Personally, I find the movement speed increase much more valuable, especially in PvE, and so that will be my choice, but I'm sure all of these will have their situational uses as previously mentioned. Tier 5, in my opinion, is where Warlocks get very interesting indeed. This is a very big choice, and with very little testing we can only speculate as to which could be better and currently numbers are very close on SimCraft. Choice 1 is this awesome passive change Grimoire of Supremacy which changes all of your old demons to more powerful versions. Indeed, they deal 20% additional damage and have more powerful enhanced editions of those abilities. To show this off, take a look at these changed forms behind me in the footage. This is the Fel Imp, the different version of the Imp, the Void Lord, the Enhanced Void Walker, the Shivara, Enhanced Succubus, the Observer, the Enhanced Version of Fellhound, the Wrathguard, the Enhanced Fellguard, the Abyssal, the Enhanced Inferno, and the Terraguard, the Enhanced Version of the Doomguard. This is the choice I have been using for some time on the beta, and I find it more useful than the second choice, which is Grimoire of Service, which summons a second demon who will fight for you for 20 seconds, which is an instant cast and on a 2 minute cooldown. I'm sure this is used for burst needed situations, but I can't imagine that it would do more DPS than a permanent increase in damage from an enhanced version of a pet. I could be wrong however, but like I say, the numbers are not in a state of being that significantly different currently to make a firm decision between those two options. The third choice is called Grimoire of Sacrifice, which sacrifices your demon to increase the power of your direct damage spells by 30% and regenerate 2% of maximum health every 5 seconds. Lasting for 15 minutes, this sounds especially useful perhaps to destruction warlocks and PvP situations yet could potentially be used effectively in PvE, I personally think that the increased more powerful pets would be more beneficial than either of these instant cast spells, but that's simply my opinion, which will be changed dependent on the outcome of testing further. Tier 6 is again a very nice selection of choices, and by now you would have realised that there aren't really any wrong choices in the talent trees, only situational differences, and Tier 6 is none too different. With Archimon's Vengeance being choice 1, this instant cast 40 yard range 1 minute cooldown spell causes an enemy to suffer 50% of all damage you take, which lasts for 12 seconds. Additionally, the passive to this ability makes enemies that attack you suffer 10% of all damage they deal to you. You. This effect is disabled when the casted ability is on cooldown. Nice choice this one, and I can imagine lots of numbers to come off if a lot of adds are passively attacking you, and in a lot of raid situations where AoE damage is high. Yet choice 2 might be more useful. Kill Jaden's Cunning, which is an instant cast spell which allows movement and casting and channeling for 6 seconds, with an additional passive where you can cast and channel while moving, but doing so increases the cast time or the channel period of your spells for 50%. Each cast reduces your movement speed by 10%, stacking up for two times, with the effect disabled whilst on cooldown. This is a great change that allows more movement on raid fights, which will be very, very useful, yet less useful on fights that require less movement entirely, where perhaps Archimon's Vengeance will be more useful to you with the extra damage coming off of that attacking. Choice 3 is Mana of Fury, which is also a very cool choice, which again will be useful in high ad situation fights, and indeed very, very cool for PvP. This is a passive which increases the area of effect spells by 500%. This is incredible, and will be very, very useful, like I say, for high ad fights. This is a great choice to make this tier, but personally I like the idea of Kill Jaden's Cunning, purely for the added movement being something I would have loved to have had in previous raids 
grade tiers. All of the options in the Warlock talent system, in my opinion, are great, with lots of variety and simple choices that make huge differences. So guys, that's it for this particular video looking at the Warlock in Miss of Pandaria. In the second video, we are going to be looking at the actual rotations for each specialization, along with glyphs for each spec, and reasons why. So make sure you don't miss that by subscribing above to Ace Games TV today, and also for daily WoW and other video content. My name's been Mioni of Ace Games TV. TV. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.